Sorry, are we in sync? I just like asking if I'm in sync. Just wait. Just wait till it's all done and finished and I have the right mic. I have a few more things that I need to do. And then uh, we're gonna be rocking and rolling. Essentially, all right, let's jump into this. What's up everyone? It's 5.02 p.m. Eastern time. Welcome to live mixing. Happy Friday, everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed all of the content that has come out of DIY or Die this past week. A lot of it. Um, was good stuff. It seemed like it was pretty popular. So that's nice. That's what I like to hear. Um, yeah, hopefully, um, hopefully everything looks good. Hopefully everything's coming in sounding good. Um, before we begin, if you enjoy the work that I do, you want to support the work that I do. Am I not in sync? Are you fucking with me? Am I out of sync? Are we good? Looks like we're good, right? Oh, you're saying I'm not the band in sync? I beg to, actually, I literally just watched a documentary, um, was it yesterday? About Lou Pearlman, which was like the boy band creator. He created Backstreet Boys and in sync. And geez, Zim Crow, dude. Yeah, we're all good on Twitch. Everything looks good. Okay. Yeah, uh, this guy Lou Pearlman, he's like this big fat dude. He's kind of like this redheaded, like pedophile looking dude. He ends up thinking like, you know what? I can create. I can. I can create these boy bands. Like this seems like super simple. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm gonna put out an ad for good looking dudes and let's go. Let's make some money. He creates fucking Backstreet Boys. Boom. Craig's fu fucking in sync, boom. He's on top of the world, dude. I mean, the the amount of money that those bands alone were bringing in, and then of course he made other bands. And for some reason, it was just like enough wasn't enough for him, and he just started venturing into other industries. Like he bought like some plane company, uh, Transcontinental Air Airlines. Uh, he got into a bunch of other like financial industries, and he essentially made this Ponzi scheme right uh where he was getting just regular old people to invest in his company in uh this transcontinental company with different branches and then they would get these returns and he was putting out fake ROIs like fake return balances and stuff and ended up like scamming thousands and thousands of people out of their money like all of their money uh and then had to like run around the world for a couple of years and then finally he got caught um by the FBI in uh some other some other country and then died in jail. That's the story. Spoiler alert, he dies in jail. And it was a fascinating story because, I mean, if you, if everyone knows, those boy bands were humongous, man. They were humongous. It was all so meticulously crafted. And it was so easy. Like, it was so easy for him to do that, which I, I thought was the easiest thing. He just got a bunch of like good looking dudes and he just, let them sing and none of them were particularly good singers he made sure they knew how to like move and dance and they all had like like one was the bad boy obviously like the tropes and it was just so fucking easy for him to basically dominate uh, the pop world but some people just let greed get to him and fuck man he just had to start doing all this illegal shit and ended up it wasn't good anyways <laughs> I don't know I don't know how to get on onto that oh we're talking about me being in sync. Um, if you enjoy the work that I do and you want to support me, the best way to do that is to head over to my website. You can do it on my website, diyrdivaping.com, and just head over to the shop and pick up a membership that will give you exclusive access to articles, flavor notes, uh, podcasts, and more. 
uh, that new that CBD video is for the public. Anyone who wants to watch that CBD video uh, for completely free, you can go and, and watch that CBD video. But if you want to read the full written article, you need to become a member. There's a specific reason I had to do that. Um, also, you can pick up my one-shot concentrates over at eSigExpress.com. You just head over here, flavor concentrates. Uh, go down, DIY or die, and then you can pick the Enya Rec Law Collection. Your favorites like Bro Nuts, Cuprian, which is a mint chocolate chip ice cream, Honey Dew, which is a delicious honey dew, rose milk, and more. You can also head over to liquidbarn.com and pick up my Tastemakers Collection, which will get you classics such as Water Malone, Quick, King's Custard, and Saint Pétion. Very, very cheap. You can get these at $4.99 for 15 mils. That'll mix you up around 150 mils. So it's not, not a bad deal at all. And if you are in the UK or the EU, head over to chefsflavors.co.uk and pick up my annual collection here. And there's other ones such as, there, there's some tastemaker ones over here as well, like Water Malone, like, uh, what else from the tastemakers is over here? I think just Water Malone is, oh yeah, there's a new... Not a new one. There's uh, Dragon Mousseau, which is a dragon fruit champagne, where Tastemakers in the U.S. is a blood orange champagne. So there's a couple of exclusives in the U.K. Um, over at Chefs. And that's it. That's it, basically. Those are that, That's the best way to support me. It keeps me going. It allows me to put out this content. keeps the lights on. And um, I appreciate every single person that does support me monetarily, whether it's through a membership or it's through purchasing one-shots. Um, cause that's how I'm able to do this for you. All right. Um, I did want to touch upon something. I, 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 uh, I found this chain. I kind of, I don't remember how I stumbled upon it, but I found this channel called Bur Burmont restorations or something. And it's a guy who just essentially, he just, he just, uh, by the way, I figured out how to do, I figured out, oh no, 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 no. Is this gonna work or is this gonna fuck this shit up? I'm not exactly sure. Uh oh. Well, it's on the TV, but that's not that's not what I want. Well, he, he, he restores art, which is awesome. I'm not, I don't, I don't know if it's gonna be able to do this the way that I want it to. Let's see here. Cause it's casting at the same time. Come on, baby, you could do it. I have faith. Yeah, it's just casting to the TV, so we're gonna have to put it. Anyways, doesn't matter. He he restores art. You can see it up here. He restores like old art. And dude, I w w when I get locked into something, I like I just sit there like this, just like what? I didn't know this was a thing. Like obviously, I knew restoring art, like old fine art, was a process, but. It's actually like really, really interesting. There's all sorts of specialized tools. There's all sorts of just like old techniques, like different varnishes and solvents that you need to use so you can wipe off older restorations without damaging the paint. It's like very, very old craftsman, like, like kind of like watchmaking and stuff like that. And I literally was lost in this channel for hours. There's so much good content over on it. This is him um, conserving the painting by Cornelius Janssens, Janssens, I think that's his name. And when you see the art, like the original, uh, like when it comes to him, you're like, oh, that looks pretty good. It doesn't look like you need to restore it. And then he goes through the restoration process and towards the end, you're like, holy shit. It's almost like a completely new painting. Really, really fascinating stuff. So I wanted to just let you guys know if you want to check this channel out, it's really, really worth it. It's awesome. It's a fun time. Shout out to, what's the name of the channel? I'm sorry, it's not the right name. Baumgartner Restorations. And he almost has like a million subscribers, so it seems to be a popular thing. But he's Baumgartner Restorations. And I guarantee you, if you like DIY stuff, if you like woodworking, if you like painting and fine art, you're gonna love his channel. It's it's good stuff. So that's basically it. Um, I have to go to the dentist tomorrow. First time in a long time that I have to do that. And I am not excited. I'm not excited for that. If I'm going to be completely honest, that is not something that I'm ready that I'm ready for. <laughs> Why is it stuck on YouTube now? Come on, baby. 
Let's go. There we go. We can do it here. Come on. Let's go Chromecast. There we go. Yeah, I have to go to the dentist. My teeth feel fine, um, but I do have my wisdom teeth in, and sometimes they just cause issues. So we're probably going to have to work that out. And I'm also interested in um, if vaping has done anything to my teeth, which I don't, ex I don't expect so. I don't expect so. But I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask. Is there any sort of worry from the level of heat that might be coming out of this? The, the, the amount of uh, sucralose that might be coming out of it? Anything to do with the flavors or the compounds? Just to, just to pick his brain. He's probably not going to have many answers, but I'd be interested in knowing. Um, another thing that I'm excited about. I have a cool, cool project coming up. I'm not exactly sure if I can tell you guys yet. But that should be coming up soon. And you guys are going to really like it. It's going to be really nice. That's next weekend. Next weekend is when I do the project. Um, also, I got in contact with Dr. Kurt Kistler. Kurt Kistler is a chemist. And he teaches over... He's a doctor. Uh, Dr. Kistler, he teaches over at uh, Penn State. And I wasn't too aware of him until someone in the comments talked about him and then I looked him up and he's done vi uh, videos with P. Bissardo and Jeannie, uh, Jeannie K, who's an old, older DIY uh, personality, uh, one of the pioneers of the DIY scene. Uh, she's still around too. I just don't think she makes videos or does a, does a podcast anymore. But um, he's very smart chemist. And I got in touch with him because I'm like, look, there's so many questions that I want a chemist to answer but I need a chemist who understands the vaping industry I need a chemist who knows what it is we're doing with these aromas because I know it's a new sort of field there's never been a field like this before and I've said this before but I like to stress it there's never really been a field like this where we are mixing compounds and natural flavors into a base that's meant to be heated at a velocity to, to produce an emulated flavor it's just not been done. Now we've created extracts and aromas to to kind of give us flavors and aromas, but not in a way that is like this. It's just different. It's just completely different. So there's a lot of interesting science that goes along with that, right? There's a lot of um, there's a lot of questions like steeping. What is steeping? What does it do? Chemically, what does it do? That was one of the first things I asked Dr. Kistler, and he essentially said. No one knows. No one knows. It's a fucking mystery. And like I told you, if people tell you they know what steeping does, they're lying. They have no idea unless they have a PhD or where they, they've extensively studied. Someone might have a data. Someone might know, but they haven't brought forward the exact data towards it. So that's something that I want to talk to Dr. Kistler about because he says he, he wants to chat about it and explain what he thinks is going on with steeping. Because what's, what's interesting with steeping is that um, it... It, there's a difference. There's a difference when you put an aroma into vegetable glycerin and propylene glycol base with a nicotine base suspended in vegetable glycerin or, or propylene glycol. When you first put it, put it in, there's a difference between that aroma that's released and then the aroma a week, two weeks, a month, two months later. There's just a clear difference. And why is that? You can sit there and you can literally blend it and homogenize the mix all you want and heat the mix and, and don't heat it, and, but there's nothing that replaces time, which is interesting, right? It's like what what chemistry is going on in that, in that realm that is doing that? Is it not necessarily chemistry? Is it more of just a byproduct of what's going on in, in, in the amount of time allotted? I'm not sure. I want to know his opinions on it and what he's, uh, what he's done on it. Another thing that we want to talk about is that new cytotoxic study that we've talked about months ago. It's not terribly new, but it's sort of more present. Um, but certain flavors um, that are in e-liquid have been presented as cytotoxic, and the cytotoxicity levels were raised in e-liquids that contained more flavoring aromas. So the more flavorings you put, the higher levels of cytotoxicity with that, th that they found. And he says he has a lot of interesting um, 
data on that and he wants to discuss that as well it's something that he brought up as well as diacetyl we're going to talk a lot about diacetyl acetylpropanol acetoin that's something that he he was very adamant to talk about he wants to make sure that we're creating really good delicious products but um not doing so at the sacrifice of health because you what you don't want is to create a good delicious product that is more dangerous or more harmful to your health than smoking because then that defeats the purpose of doing it at all uh, you always want to aim for a more healthy option so i find that that's uh i find that it's going to be awesome i think this conversation is gonna be awesome now he's a little bit busy right now because there's like finals going on and stuff so he says he's gonna he has to deal with a lot of stuff but this is something that i've gotten in touch with him and i want to create this content in the future there's so many like look, sucralose another one sucralose is sucralose good <laughs> is it good to vape <laughs> probably not probably not but i need data i need data because maybe if it maybe it's not the best thing for you right maybe it's not the the best idea to be vaping it but also um maybe it's really not as damaging as i would like to think it is you know i can only imagine what it's doing but i would like to have that raw data that says this is this times more harmful or safer than this and having that data is always more useful because when you are a mixer you are in diy you have complete control of the compounds that go into your body complete control so that just gives more people options and more information on what to do with this with this sort of uh data that's required i'm excited i really want to chat with him shoot the shit with someone who knows what the fuck they're talking about um you can check him out on youtube like i said there's a couple interviews of him up there dr kurt kissler from penn state um should be a fun video he is in the pa region so hopefully i can get him to come here in the office and then he can hang out um in the in the den and actually do like a one-on-one -on -one sit down interview which i which i think would be which would be great so that's that. That's what I have in the works right now. Just a bunch of stuff that I can't really talk about. We got the CBD thing out of the way. That was fun. Um, um, one question that I wanted to touch on also was we were talking about the K fund on Wednesday. And I remember comments saying that how is the K fund a niche vape? if there are a lot of people who like using the K-Fun. And I think niche, in the sense of the word, I meant it more as a certain specific category and not necessarily like a small, tiny population, like niche population. I meant it more of like a, it's just like a specific type of vape that caters specifically to a certain type of person. Now in the grand scheme of vapors, it is a niche style vape. I can almost say that with a fact because the majority of vapors don't vape K-Funds. If you took a, a toll of all the vapors out there who's ever vaped any of any vapor product, k fund is going to be a small minority, but uh, it still is a, a, a um, I wanted to make that clear that I think the k funds flavor is very specific to a certain type of vaping experience. And in that sense of the, in that sense, it's a niche flavor, you know, it's a niche product. If you want something that's like a jewel, that's the most ubiquitous, then obviously the, any pod system is gonna produce that. Uh, if you want something that's just like a regular sort of vape um, with airflow and, you know, uh, more of like a direct lung hit, I would say that's more of a common vapor product as well, where super tight mount to lung style devices chemo prices um that's a little bit more niche you know what i'm saying so i wanted to clear that up i thought it was a, i wanted to clear it up because i think it's important i think it's important because it is a niche sort of niche and specific sort of vape that might not be for you so if you're looking to pick one up you might want to test it out before dropping 90 bucks on it because you might not like it that tiny little dot airflow is quite restrict restricted and will produce quite a specific flavor okay any questions if you guys have any questions feel free to drop them in the chat make sure you tag me at diy or die vaping on youtube and no life digital on twitch 
Uh, don't forget, I am live on Twitch. You can tune in at No Life Digital. It looks and sounds so much better on Twitch. I actually was blown away at how different it was the other day. It was night and day. So when I take the video to cut the clips out, I download it and then I edit it. Like you'll see the, the CBD video. I have a video tomorrow where I did the same thing. And if I were to do that from YouTube, it was just garbage. It was a garbage codec where Twitch was just like almost native. Like it came right out of the camera. Power washing porn. It kind of, that, that res restoration thing kind of is. Like there was a scene where he's restoring the, um, he was taking the glue off of the back of the painting and it was the most, like, if you just say it, he's taking glue off the back of a painting. It was the most boring thing ever. It's literally scraping glue off of this canvas. But, dude, I'm telling you, it was riveting. Like, you're sitting there like, oh, that feels so good. Get all that glue off. It's just so good. Such good content. And his voice is so soothing. You're welcome, by the way. You're welcome. You're going to enjoy it. I wish these other re reviewers... I wish these other viewers would jump over to Twitch. Oh uh, yeah, some people just don't want to switch. You know. Higher sucralose percentage leaves mark on my front teeth on higher wattages. Yes, um, it will. I don't know if it's specifically sucralose, but like darker juices, um, if you vape them and you vape it with like, I don't know how, if I, I don't know if I can show you, but it's like, you put the drip tip kind of on your front teeth like that, and then you vape through your front teeth, you will like stain the front of your teeth. I've had it happen to myself before. And then you look in the mirror and you're like, what the fuck is on my mouth? And then you have to like rub it off. So don't do that. Don't do that. It's probably not, not good. You don't want to be staining your teeth. I haven't had much of an issue with that with lighter color juices or clear juices. It seems to be just like a dark juice thing. And I vape sucralose all the time. I eat so much white cheddar smart pop. It's not even funny. And I'm constantly having kernels in my mouth. So hopefully when I go to the dentist tomorrow, there's not like a hidden kernel somewhere deep in my gum that's fucking me up. Oh, I see some, see some questions here. All right. As a primary MTL vapor who recently started mixing and using an RDA, you're right on the money with your opinion. Good, I'm glad you agree. I'm a I'm making a roasted chi roasted chicken e liquid. Roasted chicken e liquid. Can you can you can I help? Um, you don't want to do that. It's not gonna be good. It's not going to be good. I don't know what you could use. Like if we were being serious about it, I don't know what you would be able to emulate as meat. You know? If there's like a chicken broth flavor, which I'm sure there is, just put a couple bouillon cubes in your e-liquid, steep it out, and you might be able to emulate some chicken. It's just you're going to have to make sure there's no particulate in there. So this is what you do. You get a couple chicken stock bouillon cubes, drop it in PG, blend it up, let the flavor steep in. You're going to have to make your own flavoring. But then you're going to have to take that, put it in a centrifuge, centrifuge all the fats and oils out of it, and then what you're left is the byproduct. And then hopefully you can use that. Hopefully there's no other particulate left in there. And then you might have a chicken stock, chicken broth flavoring that you could use. It's not gonna be concentrated, so you're gonna to need to use a lot of it. And then you can also use it in like your miso soup. You wanna see recipes for mouth to lung RTAs? Just anything, I mean, it's really anything, I, I can do that, but I mean, the king of the, of the K-Fun in my opinion is RY4. RY4s just do so well. Like Obsidian does so well in a K-Fun. It's not even funny. 
Pistachio RA4 is another one. It does so well in a K fun. And that one has a quite a robust flavor, like a lot going on. And it does uh, come through pretty nicely on a K fun. Is Enderinger still good for reference compared to Entheon? I would say it's still good, yeah. I would say it's still good. When you compare it to an Entheon, no. Entheon is just, you're going to get way more saturation out of it. But it's still good. If you have one, it's not bad. That's just what the best was. That and the Plumeville were the best that we had back in the day. Is mixing higher, Nick, mixes like, say, 9%. Should I bump up the flavor also? You might need to. Just bump it up a little bit. You're going to have to experiment. Don't ex don't don't be afraid to experiment, guys. This is something we should talk about. I always see a lot of people asking, "Hey, can I use this flavoring in your watermelon? I don't have this flavoring, so can I swap it out for this flavoring?" Um yes, the answer is always yes. You you physically can. You're just just know that it's not the same recipe. It's a completely different recipe that you're mixing. And you're going to need to mess around with it. You're going to need to tweak it. It's not going to be just one-to-one -one swap, unless stated. Sometimes people mix and they know for a fact another flavoring can work there. So they might state it. But if not, if otherwise, then you're going to have to tweak it. You're going to have to make a few batches of that e-liquid for it to taste correct. For it to taste good, you know? There's just so much chemistry that goes on in here that... Uh, it's very specific. So don't be afraid to experiment. If you if you find that 9% is muting your flavors, turn it up a little bit, you know? You could always turn your e-liquid up. It's hard to turn it. You can't take anything out, you know what I mean? And I just overdripped. And it's your fault. I overdripped and it's your fault because you got me talking about this. And now you owe me a new Hadley. You can send it to my office, 417 South Street. Bada bing, bada boom. All right. Vaping Naked's Unicorn. Why? Because it was available. I was out of juice. I was out in um, Brigantine Beach. So I bought some. Okay? Get off my back. I like Naked. I do. I like naked. I like being naked. I like other people being naked. And I like naked e-liquid. Oh, by the way, <laughs> that noise is probably super annoying. Uh-oh. Did I not bring my other vape? Come on, come on, you son of a bitch. Where is it? Here we go. Here we go. Hey, I'm, I have this whole box of one-on-one -on -one e liquid. It's all in three milligrams. I mean, it's dozens, dozens. Um, I'm gonna figure out a way to do a giveaway and just give this out. Cause I'm not gonna vape it. I'm not gonna vape all of it. Um, what I'm probably going to do is probably put it up on the website. And if you're a subscriber, then um, if you are a paid subscriber, then you'll have a chance to, to get some of that stuff. I just want to let you know, I'm not going to vape it. It's a lot. It's a lot of juice. Um, I'll figure out some way maybe to, I don't know. It's going to be expensive to ship. Shout out to, uh, what was that? Was that a host? I don't know what that was, but thank you. Whatever that was. Oh, thank you for the subscription. Spinex693, thank you so much for subscribing. Much love, much appreciated. Also, Abby Hour, thank you for the host. Much appreciated for that. And thank you for the follow, Strong Dick. Thank you. All right. I want to make some cupcakes today. So we're going to mix up some cupcake. Cupcake e-liquid. That's probably a lot less more annoying, right? A lot less annoying. Is that his name? Strong Dick? Yeah. Okay. Strong Dick. 
Let me catch up. I'm. It's hard to control two chats. It is. JFM, shout out Mr. Walker. Fine stream we are having today. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. I'm glad you're enjoying it. How are, how are you doing, JFM? Have you been doing any videos lately? I think I asked you that question. I think you said you've been busy working or something. For me, because you love me, vape water Malone out of your K Fun light. I'm curious on what you think. I can already tell you it's probably not the best. It's like I said, it's like Saint Petion. There's a little bit more of it's accent heavy. There's a lot of fluttery notes going on. Um, and it's just better out of an RDA because you're going to pick up like that like robust watermelon flavor that you get from it. It's not a very sweet, concentrated vape. Can't be a weak dick now, can I? You know what? I don't judge anymore. I don't judge. You could be. You could be, but it's probably best to be a strong one. You always want to stay strong. There's another follow here. Thank you so much for the follow. Chessie Gloina. Chessie Gloina. All right. Um, yeah, let's do cupcakes today. What else do I have, have to talk about? There's not much else going on. Um in the news i kind of talked about all of the upcoming stuff um i have a produced video coming next week on bakeries so instead of the live stream bakery list i'm gonna take that i i took it already and and made an actual video on it and i'm gonna talk about the best bakeries to use which uh should help a bunch of people out i have a a few other stuff coming and then the project and then that's it so far. That's all I got off the top of my head. The Mjolnir should be the next review. If I get it in soon, it should be in any day now. I can't imagine it. I purchased it on, on the 10th and I purchased it from Cthulhu and it's still not here, which is a little distressing. So I'm going to send them an email and see how much longer it's going to take. Cause if, if it's going to take any longer, I might cancel it and then order it from somewhere that I know I'm going to get it quicker. But I want to review that one because some people have said the flavor. Ah, but I want to see for myself. I want to see for myself. Anthony Vapes, the, one of the designers of it said, he, said to me that he thinks it's better than like any of these flavor RDAs that we've been using from the cyclone products. So it's a big, it's a big claim. It's a big claim, and I want, I, I want to see if it, if it holds up. I'm gonna be completely open-minded. You know, I'm looking for something to dethrone the Antheon, the Citadel, and the Hadley. I'm looking for something to dethrone it. Hey, I'm new here, big fan. And can you suggest me mouth to lung dripper? Cause I am most mouth to lung user and not much direct lung. K fun light, K fun light. If you can't get it, get the clone. I just did a review on it, go check it out. It's pronounced Molner, Mjolner, Pjolner. It's pronounced Pjolner. Mjolnir. It's like a Viking, right? Isn't that some sort of like Viking? Some sort of uh, Icelandic or uh, Norwe Norwegian sort of name? Mjolnir. When I first heard of it, I thought it was the the one that that one dude made. The one, I don't know if he's Swiss or Icelandic or forget his name, but he did all the airflow tests. I thought it was his RDA and I was like, not interested in that. But then I found out it's a different RDA. Chrissy Newland, thank you so much for the sub. I mean, the, the follow, thank you so much. Still around with something in the pipeline, JFM says, has been, op life has had, has been obstacles, but I have plans for future content. Good, I, I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see it. A lot of the the DIY scene has kind of pulled back, I've noticed. Like New Amsterdam's not around. There's a bunch of mixers that 
popped up uh, in the last couple of years. It just they just stopped making the content. They stopped making content. JB Outdoors, two dollar donation. Thank you so much. What is your all time favorite RDA and tank? My all time favorite RDA is the Hadley. I always use it. Ever since I got it, it's been my best friend. I love you, Hadley. I'll never leave you. Um, you know, sometimes I might have to see something new, but I'll never leave you. Shout out to Raw Robsta. Robsta, thank you so much for uh Hadley is definitely my favorite of the RDAs. So good, dude. My favorite R, my favorite RTA or tank would have to be the Griffin. I use the Griffin when I, I, I love the K fun back in the day and that was my favorite, but I always wanted an RDA like experience out of something like a K fun. So then the sub tank started coming out and now it's like the flavor is not that good. And then the orchid came out and I was like, okay, now we're getting somewhere. We can get more um, juice flow in here. We got a little bit more airflow. We can get some better flavor. And then a little bit later, the Griffin came out by Geek Vape. And that was it. I was like, dude, I'm a Griffin fan for life. And I rocked the Griffin for a long time. Had the top fill on it. Uh, had excellent flavor. And it was just it was just super easy to use. Um, but since then, the Hadley, the Entheon have come along. And that's all I've used since then. I haven't, I haven't really used anything else. Um, I was using the Pixie though. I was using the Pixie and I was using the Hermetic for a little bit, but they're good. They're just not the Hadley, you know, they're not the Citadel. They're not the Entheon. And I hate, I hate tickling Mac, Max balls. Mac is the owner of Cyclone. I hate tickling in his balls, but they, he made the best RDAs. I, I will definitively say that. If you're looking for flavor, he made the best RDAs. Some people don't like them. I think those people are absolutely insane. Sometimes you put a fuse clapped it in here, and sometimes your e-liquid will absorb a little bit of moisture from the air, like water, and then when you drip it, it creates that sound. And I hate it. That's the one thing I hate about it. But that's just any coil, really. It has nothing to do with the RDA. So winning your coil selection, like I said, I'm happy to shop, ship them to you. I'm a generous kind of guy. Yes, I forgot. Just Fuse Clapton. Fuse Clapton is all, Fuse Clapton or Alien. If you could do Aliens, I love Aliens. But if you can't, Fuse Clapton's uh, point two, uh, maybe a couple a little bit lower than point two, so I can use them on a mech. That's it. That's 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 my that's my shit right there. I love that shit. And then zero point two five inner diameter maybe is a good idea. I don't know. What do you use when you're out? Theme park. What do I use when I'm out at a theme park? This, the Hadley. <laughs> Graphics man. I think that's how you say your name, dude. I, I, I can't quite see from here. My laptop's too far. I picked up the Hadley clone and it really rocks. There you go, man. I told you the Hadley's legit. It's fucking legit. Oh, hey, Abby. Abby's in the chat down over in Twitch. Yeah, the uh, the fucking Hadley is just so good, dude. It's so good. And I don't think they make Authentics anymore. So if you feel, if you want to go get a clone, like I said, I have no qualms about it. I really don't care. How about that? I don't care what you guys do. Never did, never will. Nichrome 80 or stainless steel? Nichrome 80, for sure, Nichrome 80. Nichrome 80, and shoot me another email. I, I, I Shoot me another email so I can shoot you my address. My address might be on my website, I'm not sure. Something new about the tortoise blood clone. No, I haven't, I haven't, uh, I haven't even attempted that yet. We're, we're gonna do a remix month quite soon. I haven't picked the exact month, but it's gonna be any day now. And then we'll do all the remixes for all you 
people who want these remixes. I always wondered what happened to New Amsterdam. I'll be putting up some content soon and hope for pure noobs to get them started on the basic bottles. Yeah, I think he just didn't want to do it anymore. He just kind of left it, which is what happens, you know? It happens. What do you use when you're... Oh, I already read that. Oh, wait, read that. Remix Lava Flow? I think I did. Let me check. I th I'm pretty sure I did. I'm pretty sure I did. No. It was Hawaiian POG. I thought I did it, though. Maybe it was for someone else. But I can do that. I can remix Lava Flow. I have to have a recipe for it somewhere. I, I know that I attempted it. All right, let's open up. Uh... All the flavors here. Live mixing is a chiller stream. We kind of just hang out. We chill. It's not, not like a run and gun style show like DIY or Die show is. You guys don't realize that show is super duper hard to produce. It's not easy. It actually takes a lot out of me too. Like after the show's over, I go home and I, I'm like whacked. My brain is whacked because I have to stay in or try to stay entertaining. I hope I am. Try to stay entertaining while delivering concise information while answering chat questions, while controlling an entire studio by myself with on the fly editing and camera pans and stingers and making sure that the fucking TV looks good and making sure, you know what I mean? Like it's just super intensive. So for live mixing, we come and we chill. I've been thinking about doing a Monday show and I wanna know your opinion. Um, I've been thinking about doing a Monday show that is more akin to live mixing but less about mixing itself and more more about i don't know yet i don't know yet but it's more of like a discussion show where we discuss certain topics whether it's related to vaping advocacy whether it's related to deeper research in vaping or deeper research in anything that has anything to do with vaping or the aroma field um just other topics other topics not not strictly a vaping show i've been thinking about doing that on monday because so that and it would be at 5 p.m so monday at 5 p.m would be would be that show then you would have noted coming on at 11 p.m eastern um which is 8 p.m pacific then wednesday the diy or die show then friday would be the would be this show and they would all be at 5 p.m that would give me two days during the week to recoup and be able to get the notes back and to be able to everything caught up and then do the editing from the clips and then that would also leave the weekend for uh just the weekend so i was thinking of doing that and then i was also thinking of maybe changing up live mixing a little bit and adding sort of um a steady sort of segment i don't know what though i don't know i don't know what because i want to keep hardware stuff on diy or die show um i, I don't know i kind of want to put something into live mixing maybe live mixing could be where i do guest stuff i'm not a, or or mic mixers like guest mixers and then keep the other guests for diy or die show um just kind of bouncing ideas off of off of the wall because this it's all done everything's pretty much done i just need to get rid of this mic i essentially need to get this mic like that and pointing at my mouth so you can see me or so you can't see it but you can hear me because when i do this you can't hear me well when i do this you can't hear me well or if i get like a nice boom mic you'll be able to hear me all around here or i can get a lav mic i was thinking of that but um yeah i i I was thinking of putting on a Monday show and then doing something a little bit different for live mixing. Not exactly sure what. Not exactly sure what. If you have any ideas, let me know. Let me know. 
that's kind of what I put in the the title, the future of live mixing. I don't, because I I was just thinking like, what what could we do to change it up? Because really, all it is is me answering questions and talking to you guys in the first half, and then we mix at the second half, and that's worked out really well. It's worked out really well, but I still feel like I need growth, and I, I need to. Um, what's the word? Um, not branch out, but do things i don't know like the same old same old it just gets me boring it just gets boring you know what i mean i don't want you guys to ever feel like bored i want it to constantly keep you on your toes constantly entertained and constantly having a good discussion that's what we do best here all right well that's that's what i was talking about what's your favorite additive in candy vapes non-sweetener capella's lemon lime there's your secret. I just gave you a huge tip. Capella's lemon lime. Um, half a percent, one percent, two percent, doesn't really matter. Just Capella's lemon lime. You put it next to any sort of fruit and it instantly just makes it sharper and stickier and more like a candy. And then um, obviously sucralose. And then that's it, that, that's, that's, my, that's my cheat, Capella's lemon lime. It's basically like a candy enhancer. Now I have a candy enhancer in the works. I've been working on it for months now. And it is it is so difficult. It's been so difficult making it the way that it needs to be made. Because in some situations it's delicious. It works great. But in other situations, common situations, it becomes muted and it becomes um, dry and it just doesn't work right so i've been trying to figure out ways to create this candy enhancer and use it it utilizes uh, capella's lemon lime in it but some other ingredients as well um but who knows it might it might completely change i've been i've been trying to do this for months it's supposed to be the third layer line that to sit next to uh, milk boy and the custard and i just haven't been able to lock it down i haven't been able to lock it down but hopefully i have some breakthroughs soon Like when you're out and about like at a theme park, do you use the Orion? No, I just use my same mod. I always bring my mods. How about the Hermetic is good, but something about the airflow bugs me. You set it aside? Yeah, I don't, I don't. If the airflow, because it's that one side, it just feels off balance. So it's not the best experience. And um, the flavor is just not nearly as good as the other devices. But it's also not a bad, for 30 bucks, it's not bad at all. I do recommend anyone buy it if you're on a budget and you need a good RDA that's gonna produce a pretty good flavor. I saw someone said they had a Citadel clone. I'm interested in knowing how the quality is. Actually, I'm not even interested in knowing because I already know it's probably flawless. You know, the quality is just, these clones are nuts, they're nuts. What's the difference between Capella's ripe strawberry and TFA ripe strawberry? To me, Capella's ripe strawberry sucks cock. And TFA's ripe strawberry is one of the greatest strawberries ever made. And I don't know why. All right, so we have the Capella's Ripe. Can you see that? Oh, we're a little overexposed, are we? Give me one second, guys. Oh, much better. Now you can see it, right? There's the Pills Red Strawberry. 
This is the TFA's ripe strawberry. I personally think Capella's ripe strawberry is like watered down or something. Like there's something just not right with it. But it smells exactly the same. When you smell them side by side. They smell exactly the same. It's just unfortunately, Capella's ripe strawberry, every situation I've used it in, where I would use TFA's ripe strawberry, it just didn't work. It's just watery. The flavor is, is immediately gone. It's kind of like leaves behind like this odd flavor. And I'm just, I just haven't been very happy with it. I, I, TFA's ripe strawberry is just much better. It's just much better. It works better. It has a better strawberry flavor. It lasts better. But they smell so similar. Like when you smell them, you cannot tell the difference between them, which I find interesting because when I opened it up the first time, I was like, oh yeah, Capella is getting in the ripe strawberry game. Good for them. You know what I mean? So you can see it better when the light's not on it. Who cares, dude? Who cares? Good question though. Jairo says, TFA ripe strawberry is wackadilly. I never use it anymore. Yeah, I don't use it that much anymore either. I used mainly Capella's sweet strawberry. I like the Entheon clone better than the Citadel clone. Well, the Entheon doesn't leak. I probably use the Entheon more than I use, at least, more lately, more than I use the Hadley or the Citadel if I'm like out, just because I know it's not gonna leak as bad, where the Hadley and the Citadel leak on me all the time. I, I over drip like a fucking idiot. And I don't know how other people don't over drip. You probably can't even read that. So this is what we're gonna do with that. Oh God, what the fuck? What did that just do? Hey, shout out to Jess Dezen. I can't fucking read. Jess Dezen for the follow, thank you. How do I uh, zoom in on Google Chrome? Here we go, I can do it by us. Ooh, ya boy. Cupcakes, dude. Cupcakes. Six o'clock, we're starting to mix. Get out of here, Evernote. Um, we've done a cupcake before, I feel like. Right? It's essentially a light yellow cake that's very, very sweet with some sort of frosting and uh, some sort of topping. That's a cupcake. What differs, the, the difference between a cupcake and a cake is literally nothing. It's literally your preconceived notions of what a cupcake is, but it's essentially the same exact flavor. If you were to take a cupcake and blend it, and then you were to take a cake and blend it, provided they have the same flavors in them, the same frosting, the same cake body, the same toppings, you would literally not be able to taste the difference. Um, the only difference with the cupcake is that your preconceived notions of a cupcake is they it is that it's sweeter, maybe there's a little bit more frosting involved, it's lighter, and it um, it's just like a, more of like a sweeter, lighter thing. So that's where you go with mixing. Is your mi when you mix, you always try to emulate what you think that thing is going to taste like. You know what I mean? You always try to emulate what your your biases tell you. Um, if you emulate the exact flavors, uh, it just doesn't kind of work out that way. It just doesn't kind of work out that way. There's a lot of things where when you when you try to emulate the exact flavor, it just doesn't sort of pan out the way you wanted it to taste because you have sort of these biases and preconceived notions about flavors like a like a, a, a pink starburst a pink starburst right you can essentially get the same flavors for a pink starburst and put it in a vape but it won't taste like a pink starburst because there's a certain stickiness that you get from pink starburst there's a certain 
level, like when you first put it in your mouth, you get that sharpness, you know, that all needs to be emulated. It can't just be a one-to-one -one translation of flavor. Um, so that's kind of where we have to go with cupcake. It's more of a preconceived notion. When you go to mix, you always want to aim to be accurate, but not at the sacrifice of flavor. You know what I mean? So the accuracy in certain profiles kind of takes a back seat to flavor sometimes, not all the time. In this situation, I feel like the accuracy will only provide more of an authentic experience, which would help uh, um, elevate the vape experience itself or elevate the level um, of the flavor. You know what I mean? So the more accurate we can get to it tasting like a cupcake, the more that that vape experience is heightened. So if we just put cake and frosting in here, it might taste similar, but you can't, you, you need a, you need a level of accuracy. That's what makes cupcakes very difficult. It makes them very, very difficult because you need to be, it's not a cake. It's not a cake. It's a cupcake. You know what I mean? It's a cupcake. You could tell someone it's a cake or tell someone it's a cupcake and they might believe you, but you, you will know in your heart of hearts that it's only just a cake. You know what I'm saying? Does that make any fucking sense? I really miss Jungle Flavor's yellow cake, but I'm not ordering from ECX just for one flavor. Why not? Just do it. Jesus, was it like three bucks? Come on. Come on now. I'm going Flavor West cake batter dip first. I feel like that's just a that's just something we're gonna have to put in here. CBD. We gotta throw some CBD. We're a CBD channel now. We're throwing in some CBD in here. And when I say we're a CBD channel, I mean we're a cake batter dip channel. Oh, got him. Yeah, to me, cake batter dip. And I do believe it has fructose in it, so discretion is advised. To me, cake batter dip. Did you even see that TV at all? Is there even any a point for me putting it up there? It looks blurry, don't it? Me. 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 Let me try it like this. Is that better? Why does it look blurry? It just looks blurrier than... I guess it's just out of focus. Whatever, whatever, dude. Who cares? Who cares? I can always just flash the website up anyway. We always do it like this. It's cake batter dip. I'm going to go 2% to start. To me, the cake batter dip provides that impression, that cupcake-like impression. Almost like a Funfetti-like cupcake but like the top of the cupcake, almost like the crust of the cupcake, right where it meets the frosting. It's kind of the best way I can explain it. Peanut butter cupcake? No, no peanut butter. We did a PB&J just the other day. Holy vanilla. You can miss me. I I don't know what you're talking about, Gyro. If you can explain it, I'll let I'll let the people know. I don't know. I must have missed that memo. Was it in the Discord? Oh, why did I do that? Did he talk about it in the Discord? He says someone has the inside scoop on Holy Vanilla. Or holy grail, holy grail. Alright. Cake batter dip 2%. That's the first ingredient. 
What's next, guys? We need some sort... I don't want to use Flavor West Yellow Kick. As much as I want to, I don't want to use it. This is what I have to deal with, with, with my Wonder Flavors. <laughs> this is, when I, when I look at Wonder Flavors, this is how I have to find my flavors. It's a real issue. It's a real issue. These are all the new ones. I don't need the new ones. I'm looking for the one bakery. Oh, you got some Olin berries in here. There you go. I really need to get a IKEA shelf for Wonder Flavors or so something. So this is just this is not this is not sustainable. Angel cake. We could do like a lemon lemon cupcake, like a lemon tart cupcake or something. Lemon meringue cake or something. That could be fun. Deep fried pastry dough. No, 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 no. Buttercream frosting. Lorenz cheese cream frosting works really well for cupcakes. I'm thinking we're gonna need some Yes We Cheesecake. Just a little bit of it. All right, there we go. Where is it? I know. I already know. Shut the fuck up. I already know what you're saying. I really just wish they used normal fucking bottles, to be honest. Come on, where is it?
can't find it. Brown sugar cookie. Brown sugar cookie. Interesting. All right. Well, we have the yellow, the angel cake. I don't think angel cake is going to work, but maybe it's just a little too light. And I use the buttercream frosting on many occasions. So we might keep that one there. When is sucralose better than using super sweet when you don't want citric acid, when you don't want, when you only want sucralose? You might not want citric acid because you might have a, a lot of it in there from citruses or from certain flavorings. And if you go too much, you could mute the, you mute the flavor. So then in that case, you would just use the sucralose. All right, I'm thinking we're gonna go just for the cake base. All right, I think I got an idea. I think we're gonna do this. We're gonna do cake batter dip 2%. We're gonna do Capella's vanilla cupcake. One percent. 
And then Inuwear with Yes We Cheesecake. Actually, let's do Capella's Vanilla Cupcake at 2%. Inuwear's Cheesecake. At three quarters of a percent. I just want a little bit of that cheesiness because that'll help um, bring in that, like a buttercream frosting. Do you know what I'm saying? And then it also has a little bit of the graham to kind of help steady it onto the cupcake. And then the topping, a topping. What kind of topping should we do? We could do strawberry, like a strawberry cupcake, strawberry vanilla cupcake. We can do, I'm thinking lemon. I'm kind of partial to lemon, like a nice lemon, lemon frosted cheesecake or a cupcake could be good. He said he, it's made with Cafe Napoleon, RY4 double, and sweetener. 10% Cafe Napoleon, DFS 5%, RY4 double, 1% sweetener. That is Holy Grail, RY4. Huh. That actually makes a lot of sense. interested yeah i know i need to i need to play i need to put like search music on some sort of like searching i don't know intermission thing Wonder Flavors Lemon Bar. You mean Lemon Square? Thing is, I don't know how this flavor works. It smells like like a lemon starburst, unless that's the, a different one.
Yeah, I was looking at Tyrone. I essentially don't want lemon. I don't want like a lemon flavor. I want more of like a soft lemon in there. And I'm trying to think of a way to kind of like bend it in there. It's got that on my nose. I was thinking maybe banana. Hey, shout out to IRAF for the follow. Thank you, man. Yogurt drink. This is tough. This is tough. I don't want to go lemon meringue pie. I always do. You know what I'm saying? I have this lemon cake anywhere is a lemon cake. And I've I've had so many problems with it before. So I'm afraid to use it. I have so many different fucking lemons, dude. They all suck. That's the problem with lemon. They all suck. Unless you just want, like, lemon. Maybe we go lemon lime. Lemonade cookie nut. Maybe lemon lime will work. Maybe lime. Maybe instead of lemon, we go lime. lime cupcake let's try it. let's try lime we're gonna go yes we cheesecake vanilla cupcake we're gonna go flavor arts key lime we're gonna start it at a half I don't really want much fruitiness I want more focus on the cupcake change the section on twitch oh you're right. There we go. No, lemon cookie sucks. I 
All right, now we need. So I just do the buttercream frosting. So good. Or do I do the yogurt? We're gonna go. We'll go buttercream. Quite a light recipe, but we're just looking at ratios here. We're gonna do a key lime cupcake. Let's try this. Bland offices. <laughs> All right, let's try this. Yeah, I have the lemon cake here. I was thinking about using it, but it's always giving me problems. It is like, it does provide a really realistic fucking cake flavor, that's for sure. With that lemon kind of just like baked in there. but it does have off notes. Every time I've used it, I've pulled out off notes from it. And it's just so like sticky, just st sticks to every profile. I don't know, I, I've had issues with it. I'm gonna kinda go to a little, little. I just don't know what lemon to use. You're thinking of a cupcake, you don't want it to be like a sharp lemon. You want it to be like a lemon meringue, but I don't want to use lemon meringue. It's not even it's not even that good of a lemon, you know. Now, there's a lot of great lemons if you're mixing them for fruits. Let's see how this goes. I'm not even sure we're going to get that much lime. I didn't put that much in there. Oh, what am I doing? Too late now. Let's 
try this. It smells really good. Pandora? I don't know if I have Pandora. Dude, I put that fucking lemon cake on my, I like taste it on my hand and it just fucking ruined my palate. Do you hear that? It's like my mouth is dead. Don't ever taste lemon cake in the way it's, it's so fucking powerful. This is pretty good. It's not quite cupcake though. Back to the drawing board. It's not quite cupcake. I don't even know, man. I can't really taste anything. <laughs> I'm just tasting like the tail end of it. The lime is nice. Try it in this one. I can't take that noise. Why is your Addy pooping? <laughs> Flavor Express lemon? Nah, I hate that lemon. I don't know why anyone likes that lemon. I hate that lemon. It tastes like bergamot. Something's quite off. I don't know what it is. I'm not sure what it is. Something's quite off. This is what we're going to do. Maybe it's the cake batter dip. It's just not working right with the citrus. What? What is this? A doctor. Thank you for the follow, man. Flavor machine gun. <laughs> oh my God. All the flavors are so annoying. All right. And we're 
back. No, I pressed the wrong thing again. They pressed the fucking edit button. All right. Let's take the cake batter dip out. We're going to put in sugar cookie. Capella sugar cookie. And we're going to go real low with it. We're going to go one and a half. Should we keep the key line? No, I don't I don't have Pandora. Pandora is not the right kind of lemon either. The lemon I'm thinking of is more like a lemon meringue, but a, a, like a super soft, creamy lemon. That's why I was kind of thinking of maybe using banana and blending in the lemon into the banana, almost kind of softening it down. But then I gave up because all the lemons are terrible. And bakeries. The only kind of lemon that works is like lemon meringue pie. So we're going with lime. We're going lime. Should I go flavora lime? Maybe I go 50-50 lime. Mm. It's still kind of like sharp. Still a little sharp. It's like a soft citrus, a softer citrus. You know what I'm saying? soft where we just get the fucking body of the lemon or the or the or the lime this is difficult let's try this see if this helps the recipe this is not too bad it's just a little off i think it's the cake batter dip it's just throwing things off so we're going to replace it with sugar cookie and we'll work from there the only thing i'm afraid of is the sugar cookie just being too sugar cookie ish you know what i'm saying it could be the buttercream frosting too You know, that's at real low percent. It shouldn't be a problem. Oh, hold on. Paid good money for that camera. I'm using it. Where's the lime at? I get bergamot from Flavor Express Lemon. Where it's almost like a tea. 
like a lemon tea. I hate it. It worked pretty well in that one serial killer clone, but then it, it just fucks it up later on. I'm gonna need to re-up on the cheesecake already. I've been using so much of it. It's so fun. <laughs> it's so fun to use. Alright. Cupcakes, man. Cupcakes are tough. They're not easy. They're so specific. I think next live mixing we do a uh, random one. Where do I get my empty bottles from? Amazon. Just because I need them usually like the next day. It's called the Jack Cam. I'm 26 years old and I still don't eat a cookie. No, the uh the mix cam is an A6000, AKA the Sony webcam. It's an awesome camera for like webcam usage because it's pretty cheap and it looks great, don't it? But I also have a fucking $3,000 piece of glass on the front of it. The 70 to 200 G Master. Okay. I think we've run into another, a different issue now. The first one being, I overdripped. It's all your fault. Okay, we've run into the issue that I thought we were gonna run into where the, the sugar cookie just kind of bullies everything. But it is closer to a cupcake. You do pick up a lime on the on the tail end. I have to vape through this. We're getting there. This is more like a vanilla cupcake with like a lime frosting, which is kind of the vibe I want. But it's still a little light on the lime. Which is why I was thinking Flavor's lime, but that lime is insanity. But I think if we pound it with creams and bakeries, we might be able to get away with it. I'm gonna try it next. This will be the last one. This one's pretty good. I think it just needs to sit, let that sugar cookie steep off. You know what I'm saying? Let that fucking alcohol come out. I'm not using the reduced flash version. It's such a bully, it's so good though. I could have went a little lower on it, maybe, but the cupcake's there. The cupcake, the frosting's there. It's just the proportions are a little off. 
If you hover over the video on Twitch, there's a button on the left, you'll see it. You hover over that button. With one layer just for your one shot, it's awesome, man. Thanks to Sire. I'm glad that uh, you were able to put together your little um, mixing station. It's always nice to organize them. Shout out to Vaping Chic for the follow. Thank you. This is nice. Super light on the line, but it is there. And I do get cupcake. All right, let's do one more tweak. Yeah, you just got to commit and you just got to get the frosting on your nose, man. That's the only way. Or you lick the top of the frosting down so you just get a little coverage and then you can go into it. It's not easy. It's not an easy task. It's all about the commit. It's all about the commission. Our third last tweak. This one's pretty good. But we're going to fuck it up. We're going to go. Let's drop the sugar cookie to one. Just just so we don't need to steep it. Right? And then we're going to drop in. Uh, maybe we're gonna, we might have to turn it up. Because we're going to drop in Flavor's lime at a half. And just see where see where life takes us. Flavor's lime is like super sharp. Super insane flavor in your face. But it's got that lime flavor that I look for, like that weird kind of like candied artificial lime flavor. Almost like a uh like a lime soda, you know, not not like a lemon lime soda, not like a kind of like a sprite, but candied or candier. More candied. And I think that just does really well with creams. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn the cheesecake up. Or do we go yogurt? I think we're going to go yogurt on this one. <laughs> Joke's on you guys. I had yogurt in mind the whole time. Flavor West yogurt. I'm going to go 2.5. We have another cupcake in there. We could drop this down to one and a half. Consolidation, baby. Consolidation. The buttercream frosting's fine at a half. One percent. Half a percent of lime. Let's try this. Let's just see where it goes. See where it takes us. Mix cam. Activate. And just for you guys, I'm going to vape it on the machine gun, the flavor machine. How long do they last? They last a long, long time. You we'll probably get two years out of them at the least. Long time. Love you a long time. Looking for the flavor, it's right in front of me. 
Very careful, very careful. It's a reactive flavor. It's your point eight. Good. Good, 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 good. Sugar cookie, zero point one six. That's good. Look. Tell you what, sugar cookie smells so good, don't it? Vanilla cupcake. Yogi's. Favora lime at a half percent will kill your cake, don't you think? Yeah, it possibly could. It possibly could. We're trying it anyway. I like the flavor of flavor lime. I think it's the right type of lime for like a for like a frosting, you know. The other ones are a little bit too authentic. Watery, you know, they kind of have that watery content to them. We shall see. Oh, how about I put it? How about I do that? Huh? A little peekaboo? How about that? Look at that cinematography right there. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking cap lemon lime in the beginning. But I also think that's just a little too, that's also a little watery. We'll see, we'll see what the lime does. Hey, thanks for the follow, DIY Apprentice. I've made a yogurt, a lime yogurt, using Favor's lime at like 3%, and uh, it was phenomenal. And that's at 3%. I'm hoping that this just infuses into the icing. That's really all I want. I just want like a nice, Candy lime icing. So the Florida lime key is like it's nice, but it's still a little natural. It tastes like you put a lime, like a slice of lime on top, which is not what I want. Wow, that tasted really interesting. Well, 
Whoa, there's like a weird off note. It's not good. It produces a really weird off note. What a shame. That flavor is so exactly what I need. But it's giving me like a burnt off note. Mm -mm. Nope. This one seems to be the best one, the second one. No, not like Windex, it's like burnt. It's like clashing with the bakeries in this really odd way. It just tastes like, on the very finish, it's like, almost like rind, like burnt rind. Burnt lime rind. But that's exactly the lime that I want. What other flavoring has a lime flavor like that? What's that called? Lime cordial? Something like that? It's like what it's it's the same flavor that 50/50 has, but 50/50 is like a little sharper. The second one's pretty good. It's just not exactly it's like The lime's just not right. It's just not the right lime for it, in my opinion. It tastes like you put a lot, like a slice of lime on top of a cupcake. This is a lot more difficult than I thought. All right, well, this is what we'll do. We'll make one more. What time is it? We got five minutes. We're gonna make one more. Just so we have a winner. And it's gonna be strawberry. <laughs> nah, I don't I don't do I need to make a strawberry one? We'll, do. we'll use lemon we'll just use the lemon meringue pie flavor we'll just go super traditional I'm sweating my balls off Instead of lime, we're going to use lemon meringue pie. From Capella. V2. 
I thought maybe it was like lost in translation or something, but no, that's it. That's what it is. It's them. It's essentially them saying, yes, motherfuckers, we cheesecake. We make cheesecake. Mind blown. All right. Bland Offices. That's a perfect name for this recipe. I've done this recipe so many times before. Capella's lemon meringue pie, some sort of cream base, and then some sort of like bakery base. But you know what? Don't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, I guess, huh? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Buttercream frosting at a half of a percent. Capella's lemon meringue pie V2, 4%. I mean, you literally could just mix Capella's meringue pie V2 by itself and be good. Sugar cookie, I'm doing it at 1%. Cupcake at 1.6. Premium custard might be a better substitution for cupcake, but I can't you I can't use that in every recipe. As much as I would love to, I can't. So I'll use anywhere's cheesecake instead. Uh and then sweeten the shit out of it because lemons do really well under a lot of sweetener. And when I mean sweeten the shit out of it, half a percent is good. already smell it I already know it's good Where's the Amazon list? It's, if you hover the video, take your mouse, go over the video. You'll see a button on the left over the video. Just hover the mouse over that. I have like 12 lemon flavors. I don't, I don't really like any of them except lemon meringue pie. I like lemon round candy sometimes as well. And I like all the flavor art lemons, but mostly in like fruits. When it comes to like bakeries, I really have only enjoyed lemon meringue pie. It's perfect. Wow, the cheesecake works so well with it. Yeah. 
I mean, I should have just did that from the start. <laughs> it's so good. But I know that because I've used fucking Capel's Lemon Meringue Pie in every lemon bakery. It just works so good next to creams and lighter, flowery bakeries, you know what I mean? And this tastes like a cupcake. It tastes like a cupcake with uh, like a lemon meringue frosting. Let's put it on this one so you can get the jackhammer going. The flavor jackhammer. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. Mm. Yeah, that's it. I mean, you could, like I said, you could literally just mix up lemon meringue pie by itself and you have somewhat close to a lemon cupcake. Go at like six, seven, eight percent. Throw in like a half a percent of sweetener. It's the only, only lemon I found. I wish they had this. I wish Capella made this without any sort of pie. Like if it was whipped into like a, like a lemon meringue. Just straight lemon meringue. And maybe sweeten the lemon just a little bit more. Oh my God, I just dripped it on. <laughs> straight, straight onto my fucking coil. <laughs> That's when you know I need to go eat. Oh man. Good thing I caught that. You guys shouldn't have fucking said nothing. Well, you, I, I caught it, but... Man, that was close. Imagine if I didn't notice that and I vaped it on camera. Whoa, that was close one. <laughs> I, just, I don't know why I did that. I don't know why I did that. I just wasn't even thinking and I was just... Doo -doo -doo. This is what I say, man. It's hard to control all this at once while doing shit. <laughs> No, I'm not gonna vape that. No, I'll vape it. Someone donates a hundred bucks, I'll vape it. If you all subscribe over on Twitch, I'll vape it. <laughs> Did I vape it on that? I vaped it on that one. I hope. Yeah, this is good. Instant vapor's tongue. I'm scared to vape it. Now it's really cracking. It's not even like lighting. <laughs> That's it. That's the end of the show. I can't, I, I can't, I have to go eat. I need to go eat. Well, at least we made a good lemon cupcake. A lemon meringue cupcake, I guess. I tried to do I try to do it a little different. It just doesn't work. There's no other good lemons. If you know another good lemon that's not Flavor Express lemon or some sort of like Inuera's lemon cake concentrate base thing, because that one I, that one's okay. It's just so odd and it just fucks things up if if it's not so particular. 
I'm talking like a nice lemon, soft lemon cream, like a almost like a lemon vanilla ice cream or that's the type of lemon that goes good in like a frosting. If it's too sharp, it just ends up being odd, you know? It ends up tasting odd. If you want to go like the tart route, you just throw like, then you can use like a sharper lemon and you just pair it with like anywhere's biscuit, sugar cookie, kind of like that dinner lady recipe. Um, And then the lime, it, the lime would be interesting. Trying to figure that lime out. Like I said, Favor's lime works well if you just slam it with creams and dap. Like that yogurt, that lime yogurt's really good. But it's it's two it's two things. It's yogurt and lime, you know? You can't really pair it up with something as intricate as like a cupcake, because then as we saw, it just destroys it. Came into like off notes city. <clears throat> But yeah, that's it. That's the end of the show. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed all of the content during this week. I will see you guys um, probably Monday. I don't know if we're going to start the Monday show this week or next week, but it will be. It will remain to be seen. Um, and make sure you follow me over on Twitch. Probably do some, some streaming over there as well over the weekend. Maybe even later today. I'm not sure. I need to go eat and relax. But... Um, all right, everyone. I love you all. I'm going to catch you later. Keep mixing. Much love. Peace, peace.